This is Charles Chip Jenkins from over Medina County Way. Uh, he's talking about Senate Bill 3 right before the break there. As you heard, Chip lost his son, Alex, to a drug overdose. He had been arrested originally just for a possession charge, but that branded him as a felon. He couldn't find meaningful work, and it was somewhere in that lost position, that lost place, that Chip is convinced that Alex found these drugs that took his life. Sentencing, Senate Bill 3 would change the way we sentenced drug offenders. Yes. Okay. Was Alex, in your mind, dangerous? No, not at all. He had never been dangerous? Never. Could he or any other addict get the treatment they really needed while in prison? Uh, no, but we don't want to... Um, the, the term addict is a little bit... Uh, okay. Uh, we want to say with uh, 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 addiction disorder. Okay. But... Oh, thank you. Senate Bill 3 is seen uh, by many to be a real key. If we're serious in battling the opioid epidemic, the seemingly tough treat him as felons approach doesn't seem to be working. Ohio is second only to West Virginia in opioid deaths. Some 14 people a day in this state right. dying from that in 2019, 2020s on there. We should point out that Senate Bill 3 doesn't ease up on traffickers, though, the real bad guys. Is that right. correct? That's right. Okay. In fact, folks, studies like one from the Pew Charitable Trust just last year show that the imprisonment approach doesn't have any meaningful impact on drug use and drug problems. They point out Tennessee, for example, as a state, jails three times the number of people for drugs, drug abuse than does the state of New Jersey, with no difference in the incidence of drug use. And, Chip Jenkins, we could save money on prisons. Right. We could use it for treatment. And that is part of Senate Bill 3, too. That's right. So money that right now we're using to put people in prison, very expensive place to house them. Yes. A, we would reduce the felony title. Yes. They would never apply to them. They would not be felons. No, that's right. Okay. They wouldn't. Would they have to, though, as part of this, seek and receive treatment? Absolutely. That is mandatory as part of this. Yes, that's part of it. I mean, there's still just the felonies gone. They can still be charged with misdemeanors. Sure, so okay. they don't get away for, you know, uh, free. Okay. Um, well, we can only save money on prisons. I mean, we could save people's lives exactly. by giving them meaningful lives. Exactly. Uh, I mean, they have to want it, right? If they just thumb their nose at, no, hey, I'm not a felon, so I can go out and do some more tomorrow, that's not an answer either. No, no, and that's, that's really not a reality. Alex hated what he had become. He hated it, but he couldn't, he couldn't break free without help, and he couldn't get the help. Would you, can I ask you to share a story? A conversation you and Alex had because you sat down with him. You thought you you're losing your son, right? And this is especially true for the uh, the uh, lawmakers or the prosecutors or the judges who think uh, a felony is a deterrent in some way to somebody who has an addiction disorder. I it's it's very difficult, but I I ask him how he could how he could do this, and he knew I meant heroin. I said, Alex, how can you do this if you know it, it could uh, kill you? And he said, we just don't think about it that way. I didn't know what to say, but that's the mindset that you've got to think about when you're trying to threaten somebody with a felony that they don't care about death. Your felony is useless as a matter of uh, rehabilitation. It is just the wrong approach. If the very real threat of death doesn't change one's behavior, this idea of your little jail sentence over there, what is that? Yeah, to if, if, see, now, they're, they're going to be thinking there, okay, if I get caught, I might get a felony. Yeah. Well, I just won't get caught. Yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't even go that far. Yeah, all right. It, what would you have my viewers do if they want to be part of this effort? Uh, contact their, their Congress people, their representatives, their senators. Um, in our them... area in Toledo, uh, Senator Teresa Fetter would certainly be up on this. It's Senate Bill 3. Larry Obhoff, O-B-H-O-F, I believe is the president of the Ohio Senate, and has said, he's a Republican, has said that he supports, right? Absolutely supports. Right. My thanks to Charles Chip Jenkins. Of, is it Seville? 
Is yes. that what it's called? Savelle over there in Medina County, advocating for sentencing reform as proposed in Senate Bill 3. He thinks it could save lives. Absolutely. Too late for his own son, Alex, and maybe overdue as we head into a new year. Thank you for your time here, sir. The best to you, and I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. When I come back, the local grandmother who lost her firstborn grandson to another major societal problem, her extraordinary efforts to share that story with Leading Edge returns.